Hey folks, Ben the Looney here. Yeah, you read that title right. I remember even more crazy experiences I had while living with roommates in college. I know, just when I think I've got the worst of them out, I remember. Oh yeah, that happened too. While I pretty much already went over the worst incidents in my last video on this subject, I managed to dig deep into my memories and find even more craziness that inspired me to want to kill my roommates. So let's jump right into it. I realized that I did so much talking about Anger McPistol on Jackass that I haven't done enough talking about my first roommates, Raisin, Oreo, and Tweedledee. Like I mentioned, for this first quarter we were together, it was fine. We all got along, the guys were really respectable, and I came close to considering them friends. Granted, they did have a lot of late night parties, especially on school nights, so I tended to wake up because they were loud as hell. That's why they invented z -Quil. However, sometimes even the purple stuff wasn't enough to keep me asleep. I remember I woke up one time to find Raisin throwing up in my master bathroom. What ticked me off about this was, there was a bathroom in the hallway. That means he walked past that one and went straight into mine. Well, thanks. I always wanted to wake up and see a drunk college student puking in my toilet. Let me tell you, the only one of the three I really had problems with was Tweedledee, and even then, they were pretty minor. His biggest problem was he was obsessed with being right. Even when you could bring up the official document that proved otherwise, he still loved sounding like he knew what he was talking about. I remember I was giving Oreo some directions on how to get to Dunkin' Donuts. I told him that he'll go up one road and he'll see a junior high school. Tweedledee would jump in and say, What are you talking about? There's no other schools around here, just ours. Also, it's funny he said that, considering there was another college right across the street from ours. Are you kidding me? But other than that, my other roommates actually hated Tweedledee. I just found him annoying. We cruised along through the first quarter. That was until I came back from fall break to find one of their co-workers from Buffalo Wild Wings sleeping in their living room. I asked, what's he doing here? Oh, this is Charlie. Charlie's gonna live with us. Is that okay? Hell no it ain't! Get that fat stoner out of here! Is what I wanted to say. Sure, that's fine, I guess. This was before I learned to put my foot down, so I had to put up with it. It's not like the housing director of my school was going to do anything about it. And amazingly, one week after Charlie moved in, here was Bobby. Guess what? Bobby was living with us too. Oh, how wonderful. And dad and Sultanjury, this was my birthday week in 2014. Happy birthday, Ben! We got you some bums! Just what I always wanted! Charlie's story was that he was running out of money to afford his apartment, because he spent it all on weed. He owed money to a whole bunch of people, money he spent on weed, and he couldn't afford to take care of himself because of weed. See where I'm going with this? So my roommates felt sorry for Charlie because he was the cause of his own problems, so they decided to let him live with us. Because people don't know the difference between being nice and being a friggin' babysitter. Bobby's story was that he was a student at the school, he lived an hour away from campus, he couldn't drive, and his parents didn't want to buy him an apartment for school. So my roommates let him live with us. I had so many questions about this situation, but again, I put up with it. Cause I was a wussy back then. Bobby got on my nerves more than Charlie did. Charlie was just a lazy stoner. That's easy to deal with, for the most part. But Bobby was a straight up whiner. I'd be trying to watch TV and he'd be complaining about what I was watching. Um, I didn't turn on audio commentary, so shut the hell up. Also, whenever girls came over, Bobby would walk up and rub their breasts. But he could get away with it because he was gay. Real classy, fella. Living in an apartment with six people was like living in a crack house. Every morning I'd wake up, the place would be trashed. And people would be sleeping on the floor. I'd be like, pfft, I ain't cleaning this place up. Yeah, that made my roommates mad. Hey, guess what? I'm not your damn mother. Clean up your own crap. I remember one time my other roommates were gone. Charlie invited a bunch of people over. My roommates and their friends loved to smoke hookah. So, I lived in a crack house that constantly smelled like fruity pebbles. That was always my ideal college dorm room. Anyway, I walked into the living room while they were smoking. 
and Charlie's dumbass knocked over his hookah. For those of you who don't know, hookah is a plastic monstrosity that you can smoke tobacco out of. For it to work, two coals need to be placed on the top of it. So, when Charlie knocked it over, two burning coals went flying to the ground and burned the carpet. You want to know who had to replace that carpet? Charlie? <laughs> In a world where justice exists, maybe. No, I did. Oh, what I would do to my roommates if I ever met them after I graduated. One night I was trying to sleep, but their constant partying kept me up. Again? So I turned on my radio to drown out the sound. Well, a minute later, my radio shut off. What the heck? Not thinking anything of it, I turned it on again. Another man went by, and the radio turned off again. Something's going on here. So I turned my radio back on and kept my eyes open to see what was turning my radio off. I almost cracked my pants when I saw a silhouette that didn't look like my roommate rise from the bed and walk to me. What the hell are you doing? I asked. It was a girl. Oh, sorry. Your radio is bothering me. Well, I need to keep it on so I can sleep. The girl replied, Oh, alright. I'll just ignore it. The next morning, I walked into the living room and asked, You Fruit Loops mind explain to me why there was a girl I didn't know sleeping in my room? Well, she got really drunk last night at Buffalo Wild Wings, so we just brought her here. Yeah, let's bring a drunk stranger into Ben's room late at night. I don't see what could go wrong there. Jeez, people, use your common sense. One night, Oreo had his girlfriend over. I shared a room with him. Well, I was walking in my room to grab something. The door was wide open, and the light was on. I walk in there, and I find Oreo and his girlfriend having hanky-panky. I immediately ran out of the room yelling, Sorry, sorry, sorry! However, Oreo was mad at me about that. Hey, stupid! Lock the door next time! The problem with having partying roommates, they drank a lot of booze. I mean, a lot of booze. My parents both drank, but my god, I've never seen so many minors drink even more than my parents did. One time, because they were underaged, they wanted me to buy their booze for them. <laughs> nope. You have any idea how much trouble I would have gotten into if the wrong people found out I bought booze for minors? I don't need that kind of crap on my record. Well, that didn't work, because I'm not a complete dumbass. So they came up with a new plan. They had a jar in the kitchen. They said that they want all of us to pitch in $50 in the jar each week so we could use it to buy groceries. How stupid did they think I was? I wasn't falling for that. I ain't giving $50 to those wackos. I knew exactly what they were going to use it for. Besides, I bought my own groceries, so it's not like I took any of their stuff. Mama didn't raise no fool. That should be a country song. So after I got back from Thanksgiving break, what do I find? Yet another guy sleeping in our apartment. We'll call him Broccoli. This isn't a freaking mansion. It's a small, dank-ass apartment that can barely fit four people. Quit making all these bums live here! That was it. That was when I blew up on my roommates. I couldn't take it anymore. Three roommates is one thing, but six? You done crossed the line, sons. Then, the day after I blew up, I hear from Raisin that him, Oreo, Tweedledee, and Bobby were all moving out. Um, you forgot two of them. Guess what? They all moved out and left Charlie and Broccoli with me. Oh, cause that's what I wanted, right? Two people I had nothing to do with living with us, living with me? That's just dandy. What was I supposed to do? Tell them to get the hell out? They knew where I lived and all their stuff was there. I just figured I'd wait for the day I had to move out of the apartment. Well, that day came, after Charlie and Broccoli moved out. What does my housing director say to me? We know about your friends who were living here. Oh, you sons of guns. You had the actual balls to pin your actions on me. Words couldn't describe how pissed I was. I then told my housing director the truth, and he had the nerve to tell me, Well, you should have told me. Now you make yourself look guilty. I might have to take away your housing license. For a whole week, I was an emotional wreck. 
I was three and a half hours away from home. What the hell was I supposed to do if I got kicked out of my apartment? How was I going to finish school? These were fears that ran through my head. Thankfully, after I didn't hear from my housing director for a month, I figured he wasn't going to do anything. And I'll get into why what he said was BS later in the video. So I moved into my new apartment and met Coda, Bernie, and Anger McPiss a lot. Well, to prevent my room from looking like a gross white padded cell, I brought posters and decorations from home to colorize it. Well, Anger flat out told me, don't put up any gay stuff. At first, I thought he was joking. But then, I noticed my pony toys were missing. Oh, so he was one of those people. Well, I opened up my dresser, and there were my toys. I put them back up where they were, and they didn't move again. I'm pretty sure Anger got the message. Don't touch my stuff. I don't have many other stories related to Anger, as I didn't talk to him much, because he was a dick. But I remember one time he told me he was sitting in a McDonald's parking lot. He watched a guy drop $500. He then got out of his car and informed the gentleman he dropped his money. The nice guy thanked him and drove off on his merry way. Oh wait, that's what he would have done if he wasn't a complete psycho. No, he waited for the guy to drive away and ran up and took the guy's cash. Yeah, like I said, don't touch my stuff. Don't know if that story is true or not, but if it is, what the actual hell, man? It's that time again, Jackass Stories! So when Jackass moved in, it wasn't long until one of his butt buddies moved in with us. We'll call him Jose. Jose was a guy in his 30s who ended up living with us because his sister was tired of putting up with him. This guy was just straight up paranoid. After I got out of the shower, he was chewing out Coda because he was buzzing on the doorbell and nobody let him in. He was shouting, When I need to come in here, I expect you guys to let me in. I could have been getting killed by somebody out there. Um, you weren't supposed to be living here anyway, buddy. Then I'd be eating breakfast at the kitchen table while Jose was sleeping on the couch. He'd wake up and shout, Stop staring at me, Ben! Stop watching me sleep! It's creepy! Um, for one thing, I was looking out the window. My line of vision was in no way directed towards you. For another thing, if I'm gonna watch somebody sleep, it's gonna be somebody better looking than you. When Jackass wasn't complaining about practically everything, he'd be getting his tampon bloody over our door not being locked. Despite the fact I counted more than 20 times he walked out of the apartment without locking the door, but that's besides the point. Coda did it a lot too, and every time, Jackass would be whining and whining about it. It got to the point where I blew up and shouted, Would you shut up about the damn door? If it bothers you that much, get off your lazy ass and lock it yourself, you stupid stoner! You can only tolerate stupidity for so long. I remember the moment I became mean like it was yesterday. So, I come back from winter break, already mad because Jackass had two more of his friends living with us. So I walked into my bedroom to find a guy I never met sleeping in my bed. Oh, that tore it. You done poked the gorilla in the monkey house. I blew up on Jackass, dropping F-bombs like I had my arms stuck in a beehive. And, what cracks me up is, Jackass got mad at me for yelling at him. Uh, dude, last time I checked, you let a guy sleep in my bed without my permission. If I let one of my friends do that to your bed, you would have stabbed me. But I would never once think of doing that, because I have respect for other people's personal space. Well, one of the two friends Jackass had living with us moved out, but we were still stuck with one. His story was that his parents kicked him out. So, this guy, we'll call him Don, was living with us. I was sick and tired of babysitting other people's friends, so I sent an email to my housing director. You know, the guy who told me to tell him if my roommates were up to no good? Wanna know what his response was? I'm sorry to hear that, Ben. What do your other roommates think about it? Get them all together so we can talk about it together. You dick. You straight up Dick, I try to do what you tell me to do, and you don't want to do your job. How much of my tuition money went into your pocket, you fat ass? Oh, he's so lucky I was focused on getting my schooling done. I would have got a lawyer and sued his ass. 
But I couldn't afford a damn lawyer because I had student loans to pay off. For-profit schools, avoid them at all costs. So after nine weeks after I sent that email, Don was stupid enough to put our address as his mailing address. We picked up his mail, Coda took a picture, and sent it to the housing director. Finally, he told Jack S to get Don out of there. One last thing about Don. Jack S told me that he called me an inbred retard behind my back. Really? Well, Don, call me an inbred retard is one thing. However, you lacked so much balls that you didn't even say it to my face. Well, Don, at least this inbred retard knows how to take care of himself. I'll live on the street before I ever mooch off of my friends. At least this inbred retard didn't owe over $100 in unpaid toll roads. Have fun working at McDonald's the rest of your life, you weed bag! Yet, yeah, even after we got rid of Don, Jack S. would still invite his friends over every night to smoke weed. I'm not exaggerating. Literally, every night, he had friends over to smoke weed. Okay, a couple of times a week is one thing. This guy invited them over. Every. Day. It was always more than four friends. I remember one Saturday, I counted 20 people came over. What is it about claustrophobic apartments that make people think, Oh yeah, this is the perfect place to invite 20 people over to party. It got to the point where I would up and leave the apartment because I didn't want to smell weed smoke while hearing heavy metal music blasting while I was trying to read Harry Potter. Can a man find peace in his own home? So, now that I told you guys about my girlfriend Layla, let me tell you about a jackass story involving her. So, I was chatting with her on Skype. I was in the privacy of my own room. Well, not Jack S's friends came over that night, so he came into the room while I was trying to talk to Layla on my laptop. He knew I was talking to a girl, and here's what he decided to do. Hey, remember that porn you gave me? You little punk. Long story short, I had some adult movies that I no longer wanted, so I gave them to Jack S. Don't judge me, you're guilty of it too. Don't deny it. So anyway, he picked that moment while I was talking to my girlfriend to bring up porn. I told him I didn't know what he was talking about, and he eventually walked out of the room. I was so embarrassed. I explained to Layla what he was talking about, and bless her heart, she said she wasn't mad at me, and she appreciated my honesty. After I got done talking to her, I stormed into the living room where Jack S was, and me and him had a long talk about not butting into conversations that he's not involved with. Bringing up adult films while a guy is talking to his girlfriend. Who does that? Well, Jack S did. Yet, after all this, after all I told you he did to me, he still tried to tell me that I can't say he's the worst roommate I had. <laughs> Buddy, you are so out of touch with reality. Well, that'll do it for this video. I think I told you pretty much all the worst roommate stories I got. The ones I remember, at least. I apologize if my anger offended anybody, but you know, I've seen some crap. Don't know how I survived, but it wasn't easy. At least we got some good videos out of it. My roommates are probably going to learn the hard way that if you piss somebody off, don't piss off the guy with a YouTube channel. Well, have you folks had any bad roommate experiences? Let me know in the comments below. Until next video, take it easy fam.